Charlie is studying the time it takes members of his company to travel to the office. He stands by the door to the office from 8.40 to 8.50 one morning and asks workers, as they arrive, how long their journey was. Part A asks, state the sampling method that Charlie used. So we know, as we're told in this piece of information, Charlie waited by the door for the opportunity to ask people how long their journey was. He asked who was he asked the people who happened to be there at the right time. He didn't pre-plan anything or um, select the sample carefully based on who people were. He asked who was convenient, who happened to be there between that time frame, 8.40 to 8.50. Uh, and so we know that sam- the sampling method Charlie used was something called opportunity sampling, or it's also called convenience sampling. Um, he picked the people who were there when it was convenient um, at the time that he was there. Uh, and this is just a method of sampling where you take the sample from people who are available at the time that the study is carried out and who fit the criteria looking for. So the people who were there from 8.40 to 8.50 this particular morning and who were workers um, arriving to the office. So all we need to state is that Charlie used opportunity sampling uh, and this will get us the one mark available for the question. Um, we just needed to state opportunity sampling. Uh, we could have also called it convenient sampling. Uh, they mean the exact same thing, it's just a different name for the same type of sampling method. Now we're asked for part B to state and briefly describe an alternative method of non-random sampling that Charlie could have used uh, to obtain a sample of 40 workers. So of the random non-random sampling methods that we know, one of them is opportunity or convenient sampling, uh, but we're being asked for an alternative method, so we can't say that. Um, and the other method that we know is quota sampling, which is where you split the population um, into different groups based on its characteristics, um, and then you fill these quotas uh, accordingly. So in this context, we could split it into, for example, men and women, uh, and we could have a quota of 20 men and 20 women workers, and Charlie picks the first 20 men that come into the office and then and the first 20 women uh, and ask them the question of how long their journey was. Um, but that's not all he could split it into. We could split it into the departments they work at, um, how old they are, uh, how far they travelled even. Um, and this would be a method of quota sampling. Uh, and any of these will get us uh, a mark. Uh, any of the things such as departments, gender, age, um, this would all get us a mark for as a description uh, of the method. So, for example, we could say Charlie could ask 20 women and 20 men how long their journey was. And this will get us both marks for the question. Um, the first mark comes from stating quota sampling. That this, this is the method of non-random sampling to use. Uh, so this gets us our first mark. Uh, and then the second mark, uh, as I mentioned previously, can come from lots of different things. Um, for example, splitting into women and men. Um, but the mark scheme gives lots of different answers, such as time slots, departments. Uh, and the specific example given in the mark scheme is that Charlie would take four people every 10 minutes uh, as a way of doing quota sampling. Uh, but any of these would get you the second mark to get both marks for this question. Taruni decided to ask every member of the company the time, x minutes, it takes them to travel to the office. Part C asks us to state the data selection process that Taruni used. So what this is telling us is that Taruni asked every single person um, who works at this company and the data selection process where you measure or observe every member of the population, uh, the population being here, just everyone who works at the company, um, the data selection process where you observe everyone is known as a census. And this is all we have to say, um, that Taruni used a census uh, as their data selection process. And this will get us the one mark for the question. This was all we needed to state um, for the one mark. Taruni's results are summarised by the box plot and summary statistics below, uh, where we can see this diagram and N is 95, so the amount of people that they asked was 95 people. The sum of X is 4,133, and the sum of X squared is 202,294. 
and part D wants us to write down the interquartile range for this data. Now if we look back at this box plot, if we're asked for the interquartile range, what this is, is it's the upper quartile, take away the lower quartile. Uh, and on a box plot um, diagram, the upper quartile is this line here. And the lower quartile is this line here. So it's kind of the top and the bottom of the, the box itself. So in this case, the interquartile range is this value here, which if we read off the diagram is 58. And the lower quartile, if we read off down here, is 26. So the interquartile range is 58 take away 26, which is equal to 32. And that's our interquartile range. And this gets us one mark, uh, and the mark comes from the answer. So it's an answer mark for stating 32 or 32 minutes if we wanted to add on the units. Now, part E wants us to calculate the mean and the standard deviation for this data. So if we start out with calculating the mean, the general equation is that x bar, or the mean, is equal to the sum of x, which we can denote with this sigma x, divided by n. So in the context of this question, we've been given both of these values here. So we can say that the sum of x is 4133, and this is divided by 95. And so the mean uh, of this data is 43.5, uh, and this is to three significant figures. Now, second of all, to calculate the standard deviation, one way we can write the formula, because there are different ways that we can actually write this formula, but one way we can write it is that standard deviation of this data is equal to the square root of um, sigma x, so the sum of x squared over n, take away the sum of x over n, so the mean, squared. Um, and so if we were to write this with the data that we've been given, we know it's equal to the square root of 202,294 over 95, take away the mean, which we just found out is 4,133 over 95. Um, remember, we need to use its whole value, not just 3SF, because we'd get the wrong answer. Uh, and then if we put this into the calculator, we find that the standard deviation of this data is equal to 15.4 uh, to three significant figures. Uh, and this is all we need to do for the three marks available for the question. Uh, first of all, we get uh, a mark for finding the mean. So one mark for all of this, uh, including the answer. And then we get a method mark for doing the standard deviation calculation, which is what we've done here. And then we get an answer mark for getting for doing this correctly and getting that it's equal to 15.4. Part F is now asking us to state, given your reason, whether you would recommend using the mean and standard deviation or the median and interquartile range to describe this data. So if we look back up at the box plot, we can see that these two stars here are uh, quite far away from the rest of the data. Uh, and what these are, are outliers. Uh, and what an outlier is, is something that doesn't really conform to the rest of the data. Uh, and essentially, it kind of affects the mean and standard deviation, uh, because these take account of all of the data. Uh, and the problem with outliers being included in the mean and standard deviation is that they can maybe make this data larger than it should really be uh, according to the rest of the data because the outliers are just so different from the rest of the journey times in this case. Uh, and so because of this we can say that we can recommend uh, using the median and interquartile range to describe this data uh, as opposed to the mean and standard deviation because the median and interquartile range aren't affected by these outliers. We can see that they're just here and the interquartile range being this take away this uh, and they're not affected by anything so far away like the outliers whereas the mean and standard deviation uh, takes account of all of the data which in this case may end up becoming a problem uh, as it's taking into account these outliers.
So there are two marks available for this question. Uh, and the first mark comes from acknowledging the fact that there are outliers in the data uh, and therefore that these are a problem for the mean and the standard deviation. Uh, so this is our first mark and therefore, uh, as our second mark, that we should use the median and the interquartile range. Uh, so this is two marks for kind of stating all of that in this one sentence. Rana and David both work for the company and have both moved house since Taroni collected her data. Rana's journey to work has changed from 75 minutes to 35 minutes, and David's journey to work has changed from 60 minutes to 33 minutes. Taruni drew her box plot again, and only had to change two values. Part G asks, explain which two values Taruni must have changed, and whether each of these values has increased or decreased. So, if we were to mark on this box plot uh, these changes in journey time, so Rana's journey changed from 75 minutes to 35 minutes, so they went from here, around 75 minutes, all the way down to here, 35 minutes. So they came from here to here, and David went from 60 minutes, which is here, to 33 minutes, which is around here, and so they went from here to here. So you can see the common thread with these two changes in journey time is that they both went from being above the upper quartile to below the median. What this means is that now, since there are more values in this space and less values in this space, the median must decrease because the median journey time, there's two, two values have now moved to lower than they were before. So the median journey time must also decrease with that, uh, kind of following this trend, and therefore so will the upper quartile. So since there are more values that have moved into this kind of lower area, uh, on the lower end of the journey times, then the median and the upper quartile must also decrease to kind of go with that. And so we can write out that the median and the upper quartile will both change, uh, and these are the only things that will change, um, due to more values being less than 40, which is the median. And since there are now more values less than this, the median will decrease kind of to follow this trend, uh, and so will the upper quartile. Uh, and now there are three marks available for this question. Uh, and we get a first mark for stating that the median and the upper quartile uh, are the values that will change, which is what we've done kind of up here. Um, we also could have done it in reverse and stated what what will not change um, by saying that the outliers, um, the lower quartile, and these values at 20 and 92 won't change. Um, but we can also say that the median and the upper quartile will change. Uh, and then we also have to state that this is because there are now more values below 40 than there were previously above it, um, which is what we've written around about here. Uh, and finally, Therefore, the median and the upper quartile will decrease, gets us our third mark.